why are you nervous of sending me your address? <laughs> you know, but you, there's no way you can afford to pay me to rob you. I'm not going to rob you. I'm expensive, burglar. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. One time, we were asked by a company uh, to breach their security. And I met with their head of security off-site. And he said to me, Jenny, I know that you guys are the best, but you probably won't get in. He says to me, we've spent millions on perimeter security. And the only way that you really get in is if someone leaves a door open for you. So we took this to be a challenge and we put the company under surveillance for a little while. And one of the elements of social engineering is you've got to fit the heist, the job, to the company. And what we'd observed is that this particular company um, had a culture that was very rule driven, partly due to safety considerations. So if they were told to do something, people did it. So we banked that information and then we looked a little bit further online. And one of the things that we saw was that the package for managers included on-site repairs to minor damages uh, on cars. So we looked and we realised that we needed to get past security on the front gate first and get through that outer fence. So it was quite elaborate, really. Sometimes we don't need props. But on this particular occasion, we got a little van and a magnetic sign. And let's just say it said Jenny's car repair for now. And we pull up to security. Um, the night, the morning after we prepped the site. Now, what did we do to prep the site? There were lots of pool cars parked up at the rear of a large car park on this site, um, quite near the railings, um, but obviously not used very much. And me and one of my crew, um, we started off by throwing little pebbles at the windscreen of one of these cars because we wanted it to crack. Um, the pebbles didn't really work, so we went back with a pellet gun and we shot out the windscreen. Now, the, the crack that we made was small, but it was enough. Then we, get, we turn up with Jenny's auto repairs and we said to the security guard, look, we're here to do a windscreen repair on the car at the rear of the car park. And the guy basically knows that that's something that happens and waved us through. We got past security because they were used to this happening. This was a plausible explanation and we looked plausible. So they led us through and we drove to the car at the rear of the car park. After making a bit of a show of checking the car, my colleague got back in the van, drove out to security and told them that we'd have to come back. It was a bigger job than we thought and we'd have to come back. But I wasn't in the van. I got out and I hid behind some bins on the site and I put a notice on the door that said, please do not close this door. And now a couple of people came out, but about the fourth or fifth time, a guy came out and he saw the sign on the outside of the door and he propped the door open. Then when the shift ended, I went back in and we rinsed them. About 40 minutes, we got everything we needed. And then we left. And I just remember we had a mop up meeting with the security guy, the head of security. Uh, and we showed him the film of how we'd done it. We explained it all. And we knew that the car was covered by the policy anyway but he just had his head in his hands and he just kept saying we spent two million quid Brian on that security system two million quid and what it shows is a couple of things it shows that if you get the culture right and the, and the con right you can probably get into most places um, and it also shows the value of research I'm sometimes asked if jobs ever go wrong and if we're ever stopped. And the answer is, of course, we're stopped and, of course, things go wrong sometimes. We're never unsuccessful because if we're stopped and kicked out, we'll go back and we'll go back again and again and again until we achieve what we're supposed to achieve. That's a mark of professional pride. But we have had times when we had to completely rethink our MO in terms of the target. And we went to one place that was big offices in London and we decided that a good and I don't know why we decided this but we decided that a good cover would be there were lots of there was um, sports teams and there was women's I think net, I'm going to say netball team although I have a feeling it was something else and we thought we could do that and sort of wear tracksuits as if we were coming in to play a competition with them we knew that they did a competition on like I don't know a Tuesday evening or something and there were three of us um, sort of dressed in tracksuits and things 
<laughs> to pretend to be people coming for the netball game. But it just was so far away from what we all three of us were that it didn't work. So we kind of went in, gave half the story to reception, and then I started to giggle, and then my crew started to giggle, I, and I gave the signal to abort, and we, we aborted that one, and we went back with something far more sensible next time. You can get carried away with the theatre, and that doesn't always work. So I have a strict policy with all my crews. There are no magpies, no peacocks, and no parrots. Now, what that means, that pertains to the skills that you need to do the job properly. When I say no magpies, what I mean is, if you are on site in a client's premises and effectively robbing them, um, what you can't be is distracted by anything shiny that happens. Because there'll always be ways that you can, you know, you can walk down another corridor, you can get into another office. When the job's finished, you get out, right? So we don't showboat. Um, and on that, we don't have peacocks either. And that means we don't want anyone inserting themselves too much into the story. The story is about the client, the client's premises and the job. Um, but I do know of people who do similar jobs to me who will sit in a meeting with the client or, um, you know, put pictures of themselves up in the client premises, at least they say they do. And that for me is unprofessional. So no peacocks, we don't show off. If you've done the job, you leave. And we don't have parrots either. And by which I mean, most of the people who've worked with me, although they're still in the business, don't talk about what they've done. Um, and certainly we don't name clients. We don't refer to them, we don't name them. So in the book, although I talk about a lot of the jobs we've done, there is nothing that identifies those clients particularly because otherwise we wouldn't really be a security company.